There's this super interesting study that compared a standard SSRI to one specific mindfulness routine and actually found that the mindfulness routine was as effective as the medication and almost had no side effects. Let me walk you through this study, break down the research, and talk about the exact routine that they used so that you can emulate it at home. This will be especially helpful if you deal with a lot of anxiety or maybe even panic attacks. Make sure to watch until the very end of this video because I will also talk about the exact changes that your brain undergoes when you start following such a protocol. Okay, so this is the study and the researchers used an SSRI called escitalopram. Its brand name is Lexapro and it is used to treat anxiety disorder, panic disorder and social anxiety. The people in this study were all real patients, so they were dealing with one or more of these conditions. They were randomly split into two groups and one group got the mindfulness program and the other group got the SSRI at a normal dose for a new patient. The big question that they wanted to answer was pretty simple. After eight weeks, would the people doing only mindfulness improve as much as those taking the SSRI? To measure that, they used a scale called the Clinical Global Impression of Severity, or CGIS. This scale is basically a doctor's rating of how severe a person's condition looks right now, from 1 to 7, with 1 being normal and 7 being extreme illness. It's not a questionnaire that you fill out yourself, it's the clinician's overall impression after talking with you. After they wrapped up the study, the results surprised a lot of people. Both groups improved by pretty much the same amount. The mindfulness group's anxiety scores dropped by around 1.35 points on the scale and the medication group improved by 1.43 points. That difference is so small that statistically it didn't matter, so it was close enough that it counts as equally effective. Another interesting detail was that when they checked again at 12 and 24 weeks, both groups had continued to improve a bit more and they still looked very similar. Here's a graph that highlights this visually. And as you can see, the lines overlap almost completely. But there's one area where mindfulness clearly won, which was side effects. Almost 79% of the people on the SSRI reported at least one side effect. The most common were things like nausea, insomnia, or drowsiness. In the mindfulness group, only about 15% reported any side effects, and most of this were minor, so things like feeling stressed at the beginning of learning your meditation. To quote the paper, our prospective randomized clinical trial found that MBSR, which is the mindfulness program that I will get to in a second, was non-inferior to escitalopram for the treatment of anxiety disorders. In addition, MBSR was safe and well tolerated with fewer adverse events. Okay, let's now get to the part that you're interested in, so the exact mindfulness routine that they used. What exactly did they do? Well, they used the mindfulness-based stress reduction program that's been around since the late 1970s. It was developed by John Kabat-Zinn at the University of Massachusetts, and it's probably the most researched mindfulness program out there. It is a standardized program, so even under different practitioners, it will have a very similar design. The program in this study included eight weeks of group classes, which each lasted about two and a half hours, one all-day retreat at about the middle of the study, which was around six hours, daily home practice for 45 minutes a day, guided by audio recordings, and they were also encouraged to bring mindfulness into everyday activities, like eating or walking. So based on this curriculum, we can definitely say that it is a very well-structured routine with a decent time commitment, and if you have the chance, definitely try to sign up for something like this through your doctor, for example. But even if you don't have any of these programs near you, you can still replicate most of this at home. Obviously, this isn't medical advice, and I'm not telling you to do this instead of getting your medical treatment. What I want to show you is how to emulate this program at home for free, besides everything else that you're doing with your doctor. You see, the core of MBSR isn't fancy equipment or a special studio. It's about setting aside regular time every day and sticking to a few key practices that are basically always the same. So here's how you could start this on your own. First, pick a time each day dedicated only for practice. In the original program, they did 45 minutes, but even just 15 or 20 minutes is a good place to begin if you're completely new. Next, I want you to rotate between the four main exercises that are the core part of the program. One would be a body scan meditation, 
where you lie down and you slowly move your attention from the toes up to the head and notice sensations without judging them. You can find hundreds of these on YouTube. Then a sitting meditation where you focus on your breath as an anchor and gently return to it whenever your mind wanders. Third, gentle stretching or mindful yoga for a few times a week. So any type of slow movements while you're paying attention to how each stretch feels. And lastly, a short walking meditation, which can be as simple as just walking in your living room or taking a walk outside while noticing each step that you take. That's really it. That's the core of the program. Obviously, in-person coaching also teaches you the theory behind everything and helps you avoid common beginner mistakes. But the essence of MBSR is really about helping you build the habit of mindfulness and not some overly complicated practice that you won't remember anyways. Also, as far as I know, in the official eight-week program, they don't do all the practices every single day, so they rotate them. For example, on most days, you should have one main practice that you focus on and the teacher assigns which practice that is depending on the week. So week one and two could be mainly body scan every day. Then in week three and four, you switch to sitting meditations with breath awareness. And then from week five onward, you mix in gentle yoga or walking meditations. So if you went through the structured course, you might do the same exercise every day for a week or two and then move on to the next. By the second half of the program, they will then encourage you to mix and match. For example, doing sitting meditations three days a week, yoga two days a week, and body scan once a week. Of course, I'm not a certified MBSR teacher, so if you want even more infos on the curriculum, make sure to reach out to one. But this is really the core of it, and if you're doing it at home without a teacher, I would pick one practice as your main focus for a week, and then go on to the next until you've learned all of them. After that, you start alternating, so you aim for each of the four main practices body scan, sitting, yoga, and walking to do at least once or twice per week. Then I would try to keep at least one long session every day, so 30 to 45 minutes, and maybe sprinkle in short five to 10 minute practices during the day if you like. So the idea is variety over the whole program and consistency every day. If you can, I would also try to bring mindfulness into ordinary things that you're already doing. So eating at least one meal per day without screens or distractions, and really noticing taste, smell, and texture. Or trying mindful listening when someone is talking to you by giving them your full attention instead of just thinking what to say next. Again, consistency matters more than doing it perfectly. Over time, this trains your brain to pause before reacting, which is the heart of why MBSR works for anxiety. Like I said before, there are plenty of free audio body scans and guided meditations online from certified teachers. You can follow along just like the participants in the study. And if you're overloaded by all of this new information, which I totally understand, I also have a relaxation protocol that I will link in the description. It works in just five minutes per day and is super simple stuff that I started when I was getting into active relaxation. What you have to understand is that if you just get started and do this for a while, it really becomes part of your daily routine and I still meditate every day even after all of these years and I don't even think about it. So it's something that I look forward to and it no longer feels like a chore. The amazing thing about this study is that for decades the standard approach to anxiety has been medication or therapy and both definitely work but not everyone has access to good therapy and medication also isn't for everyone. This study gives us strong evidence that a good mindfulness routine can be as effective. That's huge, especially for people who want a non-drug approach or for those who struggle with medication side effects. It also helps reduce stigma around mindfulness because it shows that it's not just a wellness trend, but actually a scientifically proven approach. In fact, there is a lot of research backing this up, not just for anxiety, but also for depression and other mental health problems. Pretty much across the board, it's been shown to improve markers of stress in the body. For example, some studies found lower cortisol levels, improved heart rate variability, and better sleep. Much of this has to do with the changes that your brain undergoes when you practice mindfulness regularly. The parts that help you focus and stay calm, like the prefrontal cortex at the front of your brain, get more active and even a little thicker over time. The insula, which lets you tune into your breathing, heartbeat, and gut feelings, also becomes stronger. At the same time, the amygdala, which is your brain's built-in alarm system, tends to calm down and shrink a bit, which means less overreacting to stress. In terms of brain waves, research has shown that alpha waves, 
which show up when you're calm and awake, become more pronounced. And theta waves, which are linked to deep relaxation and inward focus, also rise. The bottom line is really that all of these changes can be measured and are not just a placebo effect. And the more we learn about them, the more we understand the power behind mindfulness and meditation. Before I end this video, let me remind you to click through the video description where I will link my relaxation guide and all the other free resources. And if you suffer from chronic fatigue, burnout or a related condition and want to know how to recover, also check out my recovery program. It includes the exact protocol that I use to get my energy back and it's a step-by-step -step system that includes diet, supplements, nervous system relaxation and more. It teaches you everything you need to get started and also helps you avoid the most common beginner mistakes. For more info, just read through the description. It will be listed under my programs.